Hello and welcome to thejonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas and today I'm going to do a tutorial video on how to join a Linux client to a Samba domain. A quick note, this tutorial uh, falls in line with the other tutorial I did using it's a, an essential series where I showed you how to use LDAP to have a single sign-on for a Linux client. This is, uh, I guess you would consider part two, where it actually creates a trusted relationship between the Linux client and the Samba server in order to make it easier for file sharing. So let's begin. Log in as root. And once we log in, we're going to download and install the Samba software. So we're going to go to the terminal. And we're going to run the apt get install Samba. And this will take a few minutes to download and install. And while that is going on, I'm going to pause the video and I will be right back. Okay, that was pretty quick. Let's close out of the uh, terminal. And we're going to navigate to the Samba folder. And we'll navigate. You know what you can do in Ubuntu, which is kind of nice, is before I get into the uh, Samba, if you go into the user share applications, here are all the icons. I mean, I guess you would call this almost like a program file, like I have in Windows. So instead of using the navigation bar here, if you just want to make quick shortcuts, like uh, say for instance, we'll just copy it to the desktop. Still leaving it in here, but it gives you access on the desktop. So you can put your icons on your desktop, kind of make it easier for the end users to uh, find the application that they need instead of going through the uh, sidebar, which is very nice too. It just comes down to personal preference. So let's open that up and let's navigate to the Etsy. Getting back on track here to the Samba file. And there it is. And let's open up the config. And here we just need to make a few entries. So under work group, we're going to change that to the name of the domain that you're going to be joining. And in my case, it's just going to be test domain. And one more entry we're going to make. Uh, security space domain. And that's pretty much it. And we're going to save that and then close out. And then we're going to close out of this and let's uh, add another shortcut to the desktop. User, share, applications. I'll put terminal on top. I like to have it on top of the desktop. We'll just do a copy. I'm going to have to keep going through the sidebar for it. And let's restart the Samba service. And now we just need to run a simple command to join the Linux client to the Samba domain. We've already done all the leg work, so this is a relatively simple process as you can see. Uh, net join minus capital W, the name of the domain minus test domain, uh, minus capital U, and a name of a user who have rights to join a client to a to your domain or your environment. If you watch my Linux tutorial videos on Zential, um, I showed you how to, when you create a user, you can give them admin rights for this ability to join clients to uh, domains. Enter, password, And that's it. It's joined. That's simple. It now has a trusted relationship with the server. Okay, I'm heading to pause the video for a moment there. So, I mean, that was relatively simple. You just run the command to uh, net join minus w name the domain minus u, a user that has rights. Once you go into the Samba config file and add those uh, two points where you change the work group to the domain and you add security equals domain. Uh, if you want to verify it real quick here, I 
have installed on that Zengel server webmin. And yes, we understand. Just to see it added as a, a member of the domain. And if you go here to server, at Samba users and passwords, and you can see I have Samba list, which is one uh, trusted member right now, test PC. And that's this PC or test PC. So now we're now uh, joined to the um, Samba environment. So let's log on with the LDAP user. The LDAP user is Donald. Now, I'm authenticating with LDAP, and I'm also joined to the Samba domain. So that definitely makes it a lot easier for if you're gonna put, like say, uh, Linux clients in your environment, in your office. Say you got some older PCs, and you don't wanna get rid of them, and you feel that if you throw like Ubuntu on there, or Mint, or one of these OpenSUSE, or one of these really fabulous, wonderful distributions, um, you can probably get a lot more life out of your computers. And most users, once they start navigating and understanding the desktop, because it's really not a far cry or a far jump from what they're probably using in a Windows environment, will get a lot more use. You can extend the life of your PCs. You know, it's kind of a shame when you got to throw out assets that are probably still usable. So if you follow my tutorials and build a Zential domain, and you can have a mixture of Linux and Windows clients. I mean, for a lot of people, if your databases that they use are web-based, all you need is a browser. You can map out file shares. They can print. They have office tools. I mean, for a basic office work, a Linux client is great because it's free. You know, you don't have to pay client licenses to connect to a server. You don't have to pay for the actual client itself license. Uh, antivirus is not really much of a problem. So it's great. All right, here's a few uh, fun things you can do. For the user, uh, Kind of nice when you set up your desktop. You can just go to the uh, user share applications, set up their icons for them. Um, let's just set up one for file real quick. We'll copy that to the desktop. The nice thing when the users come into their uh, applications folder, you know, they can't like remove anything or delete it. They can just make shortcuts to it. So they can populate the desktop all they like, just like they do in your Windows. Or they can take advantage of this nice utility on the side here. So let's set up a network drive. Uh, say if it's a Windows PC joined and it's seen as your H drive, and you know, you're starting to incorporate some Linux and they want to see their H drive naturally, or whatever you know department drives that they would have on their Windows PCs, they're going to need to see on their Linux PCs relatively simple process you go to a file and go up top to go then to location and type in smb colon slash slash the name of the server and then the name of the location of the share in this case it would just be the home folder which would be showing up as a h drive on the windows and as you can see it automatically puts in the domain which is nice because prior to that it would say work group We'll remember it forever because you can update that password in the keychain. So it's technically not saving this password forever. It just saves a password that can be easily updated as they change their password every 90 days or 30 days, whatever your policy is on the uh, backend server. If it's central, you can set it up in LDAP to change every 30 days, 90 days. Connect. So this would be the H drive right here that they would normally see on their uh, Windows PC. And it, what you do is just bookmark it. Add to bookmarks. Close out. And what, what you might want to do is edit bookmarks and go to, to the bookmark and call it like H drive. That way when the user is, when they need to work on network resources, they can just Go to bookmarks, H drive, there it is. Very simple, not too complicated. 
Now, let's make this more complicated. Otherwise, it wouldn't be no fun. Let's go to the user corner, or however you change the password for the user. Um, in Zential, there's a utility called user corner. I didn't talk about it in my previous tutorial videos, but I'll talk about it now. You can bookmark this for the end user. Port, I believe, 888. Let me verify that. Yes, it is. And certificate. Navigate past that. Now, if you put a shortcut for the end user on there, they, they bookmark this page. And call it... Uh, It, gives, it empowers them a little bit to change your passwords. So all you have to do is log on. I mean, policy should force them to change your password periodically, but say they want to do it on their own. This is a nice utility. And uh, just have them log in. And once they log in, new password. So I'm going to change my password. something that's relatively easy okay password successfully updated I will log out and use the new password this will change it across the board too you know so on the Windows PCs when they log in they'll have to use your new password and whatever other applications you have connecting to LDAP. You have like eGroupware, which is a great like online file serving and it has all kind of uh, applications. You can use that through LDAP too. So it, it's a pretty handy tool. So I just authenticated with the new uh, password. Now, here's the thing. Obviously the share is uh, connected with the other password. So if they're gonna go into bookmarks, and connect to the H drive, they're going to have to put their old password in. And then they're going to have to go forever and type in their new password. Like I said, it's a little bit of maintenance for the end user, but it's relatively simple. It's not very complicated. And it works great, see? So when they change their password, they'll get prompted for their old password to update the keychain and then um, they just put in the new password. So that's it. So just to recap here, thank you for taking time to watching my tutorial video. I hope you found it helpful. Um, the inspiration of this video was I haven't really seen too many tutorials where you can actually join a Linux client to a Samba domain. Pretty much everything I have come across has been joining a Windows uh, client XP Windows 7 to a uh, Samba environment. I even had a user from the Jonas.net email me asking me if this was even possible. And answer the question, yes it is. And it's relatively simple. So, you know, if you're an administrator and you have some assets, you're going to retire some old laptops, some old PCs, if you can get away with it and you can install Linux on there, Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, Mint, one, one of the more popular or whatever distro you want to use, you know, you can use single sign-on and you can uh, file share. It's uh, relatively easy to set up. This is kind of a follow-up video to my uh, Zential series where I had set up uh, Ubuntu Desktop 11.10 64-bit edition and I had binded it to the uh, Zential LDAP environment. I just wanted to also add the joining to the Samba domain for file sharing. Uh, I find that I've had some uh, friends and users that um, we started, who had no experience with Linux, give them Mint and Ubuntu, and they, they love it. They, they think it's great. They, they love the applications they can install for free. Um, you don't really have to be too concerned about viruses because the, uh, the percentage of infected desktops for Linux is very, very low as opposed to other uh, operating systems. And it's free and um, there's no client licenses on the uh, Samba server for joining it. So from an administrative perspective, you're saving the company money.
or school, whatever the case is, whoever you work for. So um, I just wanted to thank you for taking time for watching my tutorial video and have a nice day.